Hi everyone, this is Mahabeli from the American University in Cairo, and today I've got with me Fran. Um, Fran is going to introduce herself and try an activity with me right now. Go ahead. Hi, good morning. So I'm Fran, Fran Hell, and I work at the University of Padova, where I teach um, English, English language and translation in a course called European and Global Studies. Um, yep, and I'm very happy to be here with you, Maha. So Padova is in Italy, and you were saying you have an international student that you're teaching? Yeah, Padova is in Italy, so it's, it's in the northeast of Italy, just near Venice. Everybody knows Venice. And um, yeah, I have. It, it's funny, we started, um, it's a large public university, but we started doing um, teaching master's degrees in English language. And that has really changed the, the student profile. So now I have, um, you know, whereas before 90% of my students used to be Italian. Now we have international students. So I have a mixed classes of, yeah, say 50% Italian students, 50% coming from various other countries in the world, yeah. So what's this activity called and how are we gonna do it? Okay, so this activity is called uh, Lost in Translation. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's an activity that I used um, as a kind of community building warmer activity with the students, but it can be, used with various variations. So what I'm gonna ask you to do, Maha, is um, we're gonna think about a word or some words in whatever language that, can't, that you can't translate, that you feel can't be translated into another language. So, you know, it could be an English word that you can't translate into Arabic, if you like, or um, whatever you like. So just take a few minutes to think about a word that, um, that you can't translate. So because I have been thinking about this for a while, I actually have a few words in mind. Okay. Uh, do you have some that you're going to share also? I like have a couple Italian? too. Yep. yep. Okay. So um, so the, there's one that I've been thinking about for a very, very long time in Arabic. And the word is mazloom. And it, it, it does have, the concept of it is understandable, but for some reason there isn't one word in English that expresses it. Hmm. And so the word zulm, which is the root of it, uh, means injustice, mm -hmm. right? And mazlum is the person upon which injustice has happened. Okay. okay. In English, it, it, you have like oppressed, but oppression is not the same as injustice necessarily. It's, in Arabic, it has a different word for it. It's, it's the had or qahr. Those are the words for oppression. In the okay. more systemic, yeah, I think of a, a, oppression as a more systemic kind of injustice, but someone can be Muslim not in a systemic way. It's just that injustice has been happening to them, but it's not necessarily a systemic thing. It happened to that person in one situation, like you are Muslim in that situation, or you're uh, wrongly accused, but it's not the same as wrongly accused. <laughs> there isn't one word that expresses this, and it has a really emotional connotation oh, when you okay. say that someone is that, like, I don't know. Can you think of an English translation? Like, do you, do you think you know something? Because I've asked so many people, and nobody comes. No, I can't think of it. But and, and it, but is is it a word that's only described to use the person? So it's not like oppressed is also an adjective. But is 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 the word you're talking about only to use to describe the person, or is it also used as an adjective? I'm wondering. Mm, yeah, I guess it could be also. It could be either. It could be either. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think so. Um, the oh, other, mm -hmm. there's another one that I, I am not 100% sure. There's a German word, Bildung, mm. which is not exactly education or pedagogy. It's something else. But I think it actually has an Arabic translation, but not an English translation. Because in Arabic, we have a word called terbiya, which is about sort of the building of the person, which I think mm -hmm. is like rather like raising a person, building a person rather than educating them. And in Egypt, the Ministry of Education is called the Ministry of Education and Tarbiya. So it's not mm -hmm. only about knowledge, but it's about the cultivation of the human being type of thing. Okay. That yeah. isn't, I think, again, in English, there isn't one word that expresses that in that way that becomes really easily, you know, connects with the listener. Rather. Yeah. Ah, interesting. But it's interesting if you find like another language that I don't speak, which is German, that I think means the same thing when I spoke to German speakers who understand Arabic, that we think of maybe a similar word. What about you? What words do you have in mind? Um, 
in Italian, there's a word called um, com confrontarsi, and it, it's like a verb, and it's um, it, it's like comparing yourself with somebody else. Um, so you can have a confronto. So it's but it's kind of like it can be sharing experiences and talking about a topic. So, you know, we, we, we ci siamo confrontanti on a topic. It means we exchanged our ideas and opinions about this topic. But it can also be kind of like, in a sense, measuring yourself up against somebody. So, um, and, and it's used a lot, particularly in, in exchange programs and thinking about intercultural exchange programs I often do with the students. And they always say, you know, we, we confronted each other. Whereas in English, confronted each other is more like a confrontation. It, it has this kind of negative connotation. Um, so yeah, that, that's one of the words. And then another one the students came up with was um, again, an Italian word called buh. And, <laughs> and it actually means, I don't know, but it, it, there's this whole way of saying it. It's kind of like buh. And you know, you shrug and you have to do that whole thing, right? And I've done this activity with the students and it came up a couple of times. <laughs> It's really funny because it's it's one of those words that sounds like what it is. I don't know what, what, what those ones are called. You'll know what it's called. It's onom onomatopoeic, yeah. Okay, yeah. So I really like that. It's yeah. kind of like, you know. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. And, I really um, like that. And then the other way around, there's, there's an English word. I think there are some great English words coming out now, like mansplaining, I think, is a wonderful word. I love that word. And, and again, there isn't a way of translating that easily into Italian. Oh, I don't think, yeah. I mean, it's not really in the sense that it's not even a word, really. Uh, but is there, actually, I come to think of it, yeah, I couldn't imagine saying it in Arabic either. Like, how would you even explain the concept? But it's really concept Arabic, is very, very patriarchal society. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's similar in Italy and, and, and in English, it's just immediately obvious what it means. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's true. That's true. And in Italian, you really would have to take a long time. And in fact, with this activity with students, you know, we do sometimes they can do make, made up words, you know, words that you might use with your friends or words in regional dialect um, as well. That's another kind of variation that, that, that can be done. Um, in, yeah, in my yeah. context, because my students are fluent English speakers, but native Arabic speakers, there's a lot of what we call Anglo-Arab wording. Mm. So where you take, uh, like, for example, the English root of a verb, and then you, you um, I don't know what the word is called when you make it Arabic in an Arabic sentence, but you still okay. use the English verb. So, for example, to vote in English, but in yeah. Arabic, so you say, Anna, I... I will vote. So yeah, oh, there is an okay, Arabic word okay. for it, but they don't, they want to say vote. So they just make right. it into an Arabic uh, thing. But see, we, we do that in Italian too. That's like chattare, which is to chat. Chatting. Yeah. Okay, ah, so chattare, no. um, googlare, I think people. Uh, googlare. <laughs> <laughs> so, I actually yeah. think we have one for Google in Arabic. But the thing <laughs> is, because some of these words, because a lot of technology, especially is in English. Yeah. When you translate them into your own language, they become unfamiliar to everyone, I think. Uh, and then they lose their, their sense of like common understanding. What was the other thing you were talking about? Like if someone has a class, they don't have as much diversity in terms of uh, languages in the classroom where students don't know a lot of different languages. You said we could talk about words in the common language of the classroom, which is English or whatever it is that have different connotations in different contexts? Yeah, like I that. mean, I was thinking about it. You can do words, I mean, you know, words linked to emotions. So words, words that make you feel good or kind of happy feeling words, but you can also do trigger words, you know, words that, that, that will really, you know, that, 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 that bring up a negative reaction in you. And that, that could be, you know, a good, a good um, starter if you wanted to talk about, a, you know, a difficult topic about, um, about issues and you know there are some words that whose meaning changes for different people for example yeah. you know you might have experiences related to a word people identifying you as something whatever right. it is right right um the the one that comes to mind is as a little bit of an um, interesting one is a lot of people who work in the field of social justice uh really deeply 
are annoyed by words like inclusion and diversity. <laughs> and even though I understand where that's coming from, sometimes that's the easiest word to use in a particular context. And then you trigger the person in front of you when you start using them. Uh, so that's, that was a, that's an interesting one, I think. Um, I was also thinking about sort of how familiar people are with sort of popular culture of a language. So for example, if people, when people say something sick, meaning it's really wonderful. <laughs> it's, things are so weird. I don't know how they come from, but I, I know in Arabic you do something, like you say disgusting when you think something is awesome. Or wicked, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or wicked, yeah. <laughs> exactly. I mean, that I was thinking about, it. that could be kind of, you know, words that your grandparents don't understand, for example. That could right. be a way, you know, or thinking about language that is, yeah, either related to pop culture or to... And like for our know. age, our kids use them and we exactly. don't understand what they're talking about. What was the other one we were talking about the other day? Mood. Mood? Yeah, I still don't understand that one no, because do I. I haven't heard it enough. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it, it's just a nice kind of activity to, to think about language and words and the meaning of words, which can be used, yeah, either as a kind yeah. of community making activity, but also awareness yeah. raising. Exactly. I love how it's, I think, both of those. It's kind of, it will produce some kind of humor and bonding, but it will also make people more aware and maybe thinking more when they about their choices of words when they're in a conversation or when they're writing something and also recognizing that sometimes you're trying to express something and this is not the language that's going to help you express it and what are you going to do yeah in that situation um yeah and it's so interesting. Thank you so people much. are aware of the, the difficulty of words you know the use of scare quotes and i think again this is something on, on Salia, i've noticed it a lot people use scare quotes when they use certain words right uh-huh um, that they know you, you do this visually yes that might yeah. have this kind of challenging meaning so that's it might be interesting um, as you say to sort of talk about so what do you do when you can't find the right word to express in the language that you need to communicate in uh, and, uh, yeah I really really like this um, it would be interesting for example after you do an activity like this is that when they read something or watch a video to then bring out certain things from that that yeah. they find um, either it triggers them or promotes a certain uh, sense from them or when they're writing or reading each other's work how they're feeling about certain things yeah yeah okay do you want to say anything else about this Fran? um no that, that's it really i think it's well just that you know we we i've used it a lot with students that again it, it i've linked it a lot to the text by lena munza that um about war and conflict which is a very kind of emotional text but it has the use how you know and, and again her text is very tragic but it's about war and feelings um and, and, and translation how, you know, the work of translation yeah. yeah yeah and the violence of losing the meaning of a word and the connotation of it when you translate it and how do you um, express those emotions yeah. yeah but also the fact i think now also we're more open to using different words and so the idea of you know actually using words in different languages as you write in, in, uh, and in, keeping in, them in their original language exactly, and keeping them in the original yeah. language i mean why you know yeah. Standard languages and monolingualism is a kind of socially defined construct. Yeah. So we, we, we can kind of break out of that by using words in different languages, I think. In, Actually, in way of one, one of the things that happens when we do this is that we, ten, we then discover commonalities between languages that we didn't know about. Yeah. So, for example, one of our colleagues, Farisa, is from Iran. And I know that in Iran, in, in Persian, they use, or in Farsi, they use the same um, alphabet as Arabic. But I didn't think we had a lot of common words. And then we discovered that when we read each other's words, we mostly understand, I mean, not obviously not all the words, but there's quite a yeah. few words that have the same root. And so we understand what the other person's saying, even though it's used slightly different. Let me talk about that. And then it becomes a thing. But yeah, if you didn't use it in the first place, you'd never discover that. You just stuck to staying with the common language that we think we all understand, which again, we may not all understand the same thing, even though we're using the same language, right? Because there's so exactly, many Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And, and then in the case of my students, you know, I have, I have a lot of international students in Italy who don't speak Italian. So again, for them, it's a useful activity to learn some Italian words and to understand, you know, things like the, which they might, you know, hear a lot. <laughs> and that's an easy one too. <laughs> that's an easy one if you can see people, yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Fran. Thanks, Maha.